Hello, friends. Welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Today, we have another set of great stories about crazy people and their revenge for you to enjoy. Subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. To the story. Want to park and act like an a-hole? Enjoy paying thousands. Years ago, I worked as a security officer in a high-traffic tourist area, graveyard shift. One of my responsibilities was to make sure my building's loading slash unloading zone is kept clear because at all hours of the day, we've got vehicles coming and going for people going to meetings, visitors, tourists, cabs, etc. The curb is painted white and marked in big, bold letters, loading and unloading only, no parking. At the end of the zones, there was a single handicap parking stall painted bright blue. Now, the building I worked at was nearby a few large nightclubs. So every Friday and Saturday, the area would be crazy busy with drunken fighting, vomiting, occasional alleyway sex, etc. All night long, there'd be cute girls milling around in skimpy outfits. So the job had its perks, too. Clubbers would take advantage of my building's valet parking service and pay to park in our garage before heading out to one of the clubs across the street. Some clubbers would think they could get away with parking in our loading zone all night. My co-workers and I would aggressively patrol the area in the early evening hours and advise as many people as we could so they'd leave and avoid getting a ticket. It was also better for us if they left because when there were too many vehicles parked out front, traffic would become a complete cluster F regardless of the time of day. Most people would be grateful for the information and leave. Occasionally, some D-bag would laugh in our faces and say something about pigs or rent cops or whatever and leave their cars anyway. In those cases, we'd call our city's parking enforcement and they'd get a $90 ticket for their troubles. One Saturday night after finishing a round of patrols, I went to take a leak. On my way back out, I walked past dispatch and my buddy calls me over to the surveillance bank. Hey bro, you got one out front. I turned to the grainy feed just in time to see a piece of junk 97 BMW sloppily parking in front of our building. I murmured that I'd go out and advise the driver, but before I could leave, the driver exited his vehicle. My buddy and I watched in silence as the driver, a young male adorned with flashy cheap bling, hiked his pants up at the crotch and blocked the path of a couple of girls walking by. He started hitting on them in the slimiest way possible even trying to grab their hands and butts at one point, staring shamelessly at their boobs while he was schmoozing them. He took out his phone and shoved it at them, presumably asking for their numbers. Eventually, the girls were able to dodge his grabbers and ran off toward the club across the street. He repeated this routine several more times with various groups of girls walking by, even taking out a small bottle of vodka from his back pocket and offering swigs. With each rejection, he'd get angry and presumably cuss out the girls as they hurried off. Our cameras didn't pick up audio, but this seemed a reasonable assumption. I sighed and looked at my buddy. Well, I guess I'll go talk to him. I made my way out to the front and approached him just as another group of girls ducked away from him. I called out to him. He turned and stared at me blankly. Hey man, I just wanted to let you know that this zone is for loading and unloading, Normally, it's not a big deal to park for a bit, but if everyone does it on the weekends, traffic gets backed up pretty bad here. The D-bag looked at his vehicle, then looked at my badge. F you, B. I'll F you up. Pig ass wanna be cop? Mother effer? I look at my watch. It was about 10.30 p.m. I continued my spiel. Parking enforcement here is pretty strict. You should move your vehicle or you might get ticketed. F you. Suck my D. Better not touch my crap. I'll F you up. Have a good night, sir. He flipped me off and went across the street where he was promptly denied entry for dress code violations. He cussed out the bouncer and wandered off down the block. I walked over to his vehicle and saw that it was parked crooked, the rear of the vehicle partially blocking the lane of traffic. Half of his vehicle was in the white zone, the other in the blue zone. I keyed up my radio. OP to dispatch. OP, go ahead. Can you call parking enforcement for this vehicle? Let me know when you're ready for the plate. Fifteen minutes later, the parking officer arrived. He looked at the vehicle and promptly issued a $90 ticket for parking in the white zone and a $900 ticket for parking in the blue zone without a permit. I thanked the officer and went back inside to have a snack. A couple hours later, two of the local cops stopped by to say hi. 
As Officer Morris and his partner walked over, dispatch radioed me. Hey, OP, is that Jones and Morris? Sure is. You gonna do what I think you're gonna do? Yep. Officer Jones and I lit up our cigarettes as Officer Morris looked on disapprovingly. We all smoked and chatted for a bit. Then I casually motioned over my shoulder at the BMW. Hey, Jones, check out the parking job on that piece of crap. We all walked over to the corner and looked at the vehicle. The two tickets stuck on the windshield, flapping in the wind. Officer Morris grabbed one of the tickets, read it over, and looked at me. What's the story here? I told them what happened and the driver's response. Officer Jones and Morris looked at each other. OP, you got the time? Yeah, it's 1227 AM. Well, it's a whole new day now, isn't it? Officer Morris proceeded to write another $90 ticket for the white zone and another $900 ticket for the blue zone. He paused for a moment after finishing the second one. Hey, Jones, looked like this vehicle's parked more than 12 inches from the curb. What do you think? Sounds about right. Officer Morris wrote another ticket for $120 and slapped it on the pile of tickets on the windshield. I shook both officers' hands, and they left to continue with their patrols. The next few hours of my shift went by fairly quickly. Around 5 a.m., dispatch scared the hell out of me. Hey, OP, are you still on that call? Negative. I just finished clearing it. Respond to dispatch ASAP. I ran down to the surveillance bank where my co-workers were all gathered and laughing their butts off. Sunday was street cleaning day and the BMW was getting ticketed again by parking enforcement. After that, we all stopped at dispatch every 5 to 10 minutes to see if the owner had returned. Finally, at about 6 a.m., the D-bag came stumbling up the block, looking completely worn out. His formerly white t-shirt was stained and dirty and it looked like he'd lost at least one fight. We watched in suspense as he looked at the pile of tickets crammed together on his windshield and slowly removed them. He stood there, pants sagging below his knees, shuffling through each ticket as if he were a toddler with a handful of Pokemon cards. With a look of abject defeat on his face, he got into his vehicle and drove off. The whole room erupted in laughter and high fives. As the laughter died down, I picked up the office phone and started dialing. My coworkers eyed me curiously. I put the call on speaker just as the call connected. 911, what's your emergency? Hi, yeah, I'd like to report a possible drunk driver. I have the vehicle and driver description when you're ready. And our next story. If you make me solve the problem, it'll cost you money. This happened a while back. Actually, no one had their own portable phone. A local business auto repair shop changed their phone number for some reason. And a few months later, when my family added a second line to the house, guess which number we were given. It wasn't that much of a pain since most of the customer base had the new number. But about six months later, we start getting calls for this business several times a day. So I finally ask one of the callers where he got the number from. He tells me it's on top of the business's building in three foot high letters. Really? So I drive by that way the next day and sure enough, there it is in big blue letters. I look up the current number when I get home and give them a call. Hey, I noticed that you still have your old number on top of your building and we've been getting a lot of your calls. Would it be possible for someone to correct the sign or just paint over it? This is where I get told that it's my problem and they don't have the time to deal with it. Click. Oh, okay. Now I see. So I figure it won't take that long to sort this out. I start taking appointments. I tell a lady we're having a special on tires. I can get her a complete set for $75. $200 was average. I get a guy that needs a complete rebuild on his transmission. How soon can we do it? I tell him that since we aren't very busy right now, if he can get it into the shop by noon, I have a guy that can have it done by 6 p.m. the same day, and it'll only cost him $750. Super cheap, by the way. I do this maybe 20 to 30 times over the course of a week or so. The calls become less frequent, and as I drive by the following week, I notice that the sign is now just plain white. I'm pretty sure that all in all, I probably cost this guy about $10,000 or so in PO'd customers who showed up thinking they had an appointment and a great deal. Yeah, it was kind of a jerk move, but sometimes you don't think about every angle. And our last story. Don't want to return my tools or pay me? Enjoy losing your business. I'm a trade painter that worked for around five years, essentially running a company for an owner who took a very hands-off approach. He was essentially a name and working capital and not much else. 
After getting an offer to work for a bigger commercial company and my old boss's realization he would have to run his own company as there really wasn't anyone else in-house that was qualified, he resorted to acting like a child to try and make me stay. Made me run around the world to receive my final pay, which I never even got, and refused to return my tools spread throughout various jobs. Revenge time. As luck would have it, another even better offer from an even bigger company ended up in my lap that wanted to subcontract me a very substantial amount of their work. But I'm going to need more employees for that. Hmm. So I go through and call each and every member of the original company and offer them a $3 an hour raise to work for me, which all of them accepted. After all, they know me. They've worked for me for years. And it's more money. No brainer. They barely know the owner and what they do know they don't like lol i then asked them to grab only my tools which was the vast majority of tools on all the jobs from their respective jobs when they leave for the weekend on friday monday rolls around and my old boss is getting calls left and right from supervisors asking why nobody's at work and what's going on he was so hands-off he didn't even have employees phone numbers to call and ask them lmao He's essentially without employees and little to no tools to complete any jobs to this point. Fast forward six months and his company is now closed. He's lost all his work. His new addition to his house has come to a grinding halt halfway through construction. He's hurting big time. I never got my last check, but I did get a great group of workers and a company of my own. So I guess I'll just call it even. That's amazing to hear. I feel like you should sue him for not giving you your final paycheck. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.